Welcome, Houdini community all around the globe, to part six of my Ammonite tutorial. This is the one where the magic happens. VDBs, volumes, and SDFs, signed distance fields, are introduced. And of course, we meet loops again. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I promise I will not spam you. I have some nice tutorials lined up for the rest of the year, and this way you make sure that you will not miss anything. The chambers need curved scepters, remember? That is what the walls between the chambers are called. For that, I place the distorted sphere at each end of the chambers, this allows for quite a bit of art direction for the shape of the scepter. The subnetwork lets you adjust the thickness of the object and uses a lattice node to distort it. I'm not going to explain this much more deeply, as this could be done in many ways. The next step is far more interesting. Here the distorted spheres get placed at the end and start of each of the chambers. The magic is in the delete nodes. Here I read the values, point numbers needed. This could maybe be done more elegant with a spare input or with a subnetwork input connection, as explained earlier. Anyway, copy to point nodes are used to place the shapes at the start and end. Remember, the points have orient attribute to orient or rotate the shape properly. The points also have a P scale value for the size. The resulting shapes are not perfect, but that will be smoothed out later when the shape is converted to a volume. You will see. Now we have overlapping chambers and need to subtract one from the other. So the next chamber will be subtracted from the current one. This could be done with a boolean and a mesh at this stage, but I am doing this in volumes. In this case VDBs that are SDFs or signed distance fields for reasons I am going to explain later actually in a later video. But for now, let's look at the subtraction setup. In poly, you would call this boolean. The subtraction is done in a loop piece by piece. Now, we have nice chambers with nicely formed scepters. Actually, we don't have the scepters yet. We have the chambers as we are building sort of the negative space. I hope you know what I mean. Now, let's look at a few things right in Houdini. And let's start with the chamber scepter object. This is the whole setup of the whole ammonite. Here in this copy two points set up um, those uh, internal wall objects that look like this are put to the ends of each chamber. Um, let's dive into this one here and have a look how I build this. I start with a simple sphere that will be just squashed together um, with a scale just on the one axis. And now the interesting bit is the lattice. The lattice, well, maybe I turn on points and point numbers. It's like a grid. And what I did is I actually set the divisions to 6, 6, and 1. So in this axis, in the Z axis, this only has 1. Um, the lattice X form we don't need right now. Um, what I do here is I group some of those points. And I have number 48 and 49 grouped. And I also grouped all those in the middle. Okay, and then yeah, I choose group one, which is the one with just two points, and have a scale, which you can access one up here. This is scale one, and another scale. So let's turn the point numbers off here for a second, and also the points. Let's look from the side. When I do this one, it does that. Look from up. Does that. Let's dive back in. The third one is actually a translate that allows us to move about the five of the points. 
So let's go one up again and have a look at what that does. So, yeah, you can art direct also quite nicely the shape of the scepters. Now that would look completely different. Let's turn that back to zero. And I think this was at 1.35 or something like this. So it's just slightly off centered. Yeah, and what we got then is it's calculating a moment. We got this. Let's go into the delete here and have a look at all the different chambers. The next step is to create the self intersection that stems from the chambers being built on the outside of the already built ones. For that, I create a cutter object without chambers that is built only as far as needed to be used to subtract it from the current chamber. This has to be done for each individual chamber, obviously in a loop. For the first chamber, there's obviously no self-intersections. So I added a switch that makes sure no object is created on the first zero iteration. For the further steps, I created points as data holders again that specifies the delay. Depending on the style of the ammonite, this might need adjusting. If the septors are very bulged and the chambers are very short, you will need more delay. The delay has to be adjusted by hand. This setup allows for procedurally fully automatic mass production, but only within certain boundaries. Sometimes you will need to adjust parameters by hand. This is not the only one, and some dependencies are not that easy to calculate and are not obvious. You will see this when you play around with actually quite complex setup like this one. Next step is again the subtraction of the VDBs from each pair in a loop. The results are again packed. The next step is the reshaping and smoothing of the chamber shapes. The nice thing about SDF's volumes that represent the surface is that you can erode and dilate them. There's more cool stuff you can do with SDFs, but for this setup, we actually only need VDB smooth, SDF, dilate, erode, and open from the SDF reshape node. And of course, VDB combine for the subtraction. Dilate is growing, getting bigger. Erode is making the object smaller. Open and close will close or open holes in the shape, but more about this in a later chapter. This is the node tree, but for now, let's actually look at the interface and see what it does and what else I implemented. At this stage, you might need a higher voxel resolution to not lose the very small pieces, so I added the option to resample it here. I also exposed the parameters of the reshape nodes and the smooths. I also exposed the single pass option of the loop to just work on one of the chamber shapes to get faster results and thus to make it easier to find the values you like. Now let's look at the subnetwork in Houdini where the partial shells for the self intersection are created. This is actually here. What that will create is lots of shapes that I need to press this, obviously, that look like this. And I will show you this in a second that's happening in this subnetwork here, but let's look at this one first. Dive in here. Put this a little bit to the side. Okay, so what's happening here, again, this part here is actually making sure that the first point, point number zero, is not created. Oh, it's a bit long. I'm not going to explain this. Anyway, yeah, we know that already. This is skinning it and so on and so on. So that is actually not that interesting. Anyway, it creates loads of those partial shapes that always stop a little bit before the one that it is calculating the self intersection with. So now let's look at this one here. This is a Far more interesting one, this is where this self-intersection is being calculated. So dive in here. Actually, it's compiled, so let's get rid of the 
compile nodes for a second because otherwise you can't debug it. It is basically one big um, one big where was that? That was here, wasn't it? Okay, so when I click on that mm, it needs cooking. Now I'll turn on single pass to show you what's happening. It's creating shapes that look few less, yeah. It's creating shapes that look like this, that, so how does it do this? If you look in here, this one, and then that one, we have this one, or better, the other way around. No, this one on view, this one on preview, and you see, when we now step, with this yeah, through this. Oh, for that I need to turn on here. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it's doing. And for that it's using VDB combine and it's um, the SDF difference, which actually is a subtraction. So this one here is in the second input. Actually, the poly gets converted to a VDB as well, and then it gets combined with that one and combine set to SDF difference. I will explain that. I'm doing a whole tutorial just about this note here. So, um, yeah, that's it for this part of the setup. And now we come to chamber reshape. And here, the whole shapes are getting smoothed. I have to get up again and turn off the single, did I do that, the single pass? Otherwise, we only have one. So in chamber reshape, what happens there? Takes a moment to calculate. Let's dive in here. Let's do it again. Whatever that bug was. So there we have a VDB reshape open. And what does that one do? Let's turn on the single pass again. Go on here. Choose a little bit later one. Slow about it. Okay. For example, this one. So it starts with that one and open. Let's turn it off. Already smooths it out, but it also makes it a little bit smoother. Then it gets eroded. What does that one do? See, just tinyly, tiny little bit smaller. This is followed by VDB Smooth. Makes it smoother, and, get, and the whole thing gets packed. That's it. But you see this, this break here is already, or uh, this really not very nice boundary here is smoothed out nicely. We could do this even more with a higher um, with a higher smooth, let's say for example, more radius. It will get more and more more and more smoothed away. Yeah, then it gets packed again. So this was at one. And I have to turn this back to don't using a single pass. Yeah, and we end up with this. Looks cool like this as well. A little bit like an armadillo or something like this. Which already shows you this type of modeling is really cool. So, and then all that is left is meshing the whole thing. Again, 
unpacking, converting, packing again, adding normals. Yeah, and then we have all the chambers here in full. This part here creates the outside hull, but I'm not going to get deeper into this. And last but not least, to create the last open chamber and the rest of the outside surface, I've used the same tools and principles as shown before. To keep this tutorial short, I will not explain this in detail and I will release a scene file of this tutorials once I have enough Patreons. Please visit my Patreon for details. Anyway, remember the last chamber shape was double in size. I wanted to have a nice organic ending, not a straight line, so I cut it to my liking. I'm not sure if I did this efficiently, but it works, so it's good. I also did not like the hole, so I placed a little sphere there. Now the shape is dilated and smoothed. The last chamber, full double size, is now subtracted. Et voila! Final outside shape is done. In the next part, I will talk in more detail about certain steps and notes. Thanks for watching, like always, and don't forget my Patreon. Bye bye, see you in the next one.